What is waiting upon the Lord? And some people think waiting upon the Lord is, pray, is fasting. Well, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you will hear this thing like, um, are you eating? He said, no, we're waiting upon the Lord. When you're waiting upon the Lord, you could be fasting. But you don't have to be fasting to be waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord is positioning like a hunter for the moment of a catch. Let me explain what that means. Have you ever seen a hunter before that has a gun? And you see the hunter, the hunter will just rest somewhere in the bush. And if the hunter hears sound of an animal coming, the hunter positions himself. He's waiting to take the shot. When you say you're waiting upon the Lord, you're waiting like an hunter for when the move of God will walk so he can catch it. That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. Worry and stress are indicators that you have not been waiting on the Lord. The more you worry and stress, the more you don't have a word inside that stabilizes you. Have you noticed the things we're worried about? When you come to church, they kind of shrink because as soon as you come to church, your faith grows or it strengthens. I don't know how many of you have gone to a five-star restaurant before. And when you go to a five-star restaurant, these are restaurants where you don't sit yourself. When you get there, they will say, wait for your waiter. You know, is that not what they say? And they will give you a waiter, yes or no? And your waiter comes and sits you down. Even when you have ordered the food, the waiter goes away from you. But guess what? The waiter always has you in sight. In fact, a waiter that is trained, before you need something, it will notice it. Because as you're eating, the waiter does not necessarily stand beside you. But is a waiter, a waiter waits. A good waiter doesn't wait for you to call. He comes and says, excuse me, sir. Do you need something? How does he know he needs? Because he has found the opportunity. When we wait upon the Lord, this is what it means. We are in that place to see the movement of the Spirit. We are in that place to see the orchestration of the Spirit. So that we can say, Lord, you are moving. Is there something you want done? That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. Some people say, we need prayer point. Listen to me. Prayer point is for a level of people that pray. When you get to the level of senior, no need for prayer points. The prayer flows. When life is heavy and hard to take, you just lost the contract. Your daughter just told you that she has a medical problem. Your husband just said maybe he's going to get a divorce. The person that should fund the business says, I can't fund the business again. All of a sudden, the person that you thought would give you February 14, surprise. Surprise you February 14th. What a shock. You got a surprise, but not the one you were looking for. But well, this surprise was wonderful. You are too good for me. You are too kind for me. You are perfect. I'm imperfect. I don't want to lose your perfection. When life is heavy and hard to take, when they tell you that your son has autistic tendencies, when they tell you that your son has a certain sickness, that your grandchild has certain sickness, do you know what it means when life is heavy? Life is heavy is not that, eh, my car broke down. That's not heavy life. When you go to the hospital and they look at you and say, I'm sorry, I'm not sure you can have a child. That's life is heavy. When life is heavy and hard to take, what do you do, cry? No. He said, go off by yourself. Enter the silence. Then he tells you what to do in silence. He said, do what? Bow in prayer. He said, don't ask questions because you can ask stupid things. He said, don't ask questions. What do you do? You wait until hope appears. That's what it means to wait upon the Lord. You stay there until you can guarantee that victory is done. You stay there until you can guarantee that the results will change. You stay there until you can guarantee that the testimony is yours. You stay there. That's why your prayer is boring. Because in your prayer, you don't wait for nothing. But as you wake up in the morning, I'm waiting. How can I just read without seeing something? I'm waiting for hope to appear. Although you got February 4 disappointment, as you were praying, you just saw in the spirit, you and your husband. Your friends now wonder, why are you not down or depressed? Because hope has appeared. The thing is this, most of us don't wait. We keep talking to men when we should be talking to God. What is hope? Hope is the permission to enjoy the emotional benefit of a breakthrough before it happens. Hope is that I have not seen it, but I have perceived and received it. So people think I'm going crazy. But the truth is that hope has appeared. When you have hope, people wonder, are you crazy? Because it doesn't make sense. But the reason why you're hopeful is this. You're already enjoying the benefits of something others have not seen. If you're hopeless, if you're depressed about the future, it's a sign that you're not waiting. Because when you're waiting, you will see the picture. When you get there, the nurse said, we need 100 million. I said, it's okay. Uh, we'll provide it. Your wife says, honey, where will you find it? He said, don't worry. I've seen that. We'll, we'll have it already. He said, why? He said, don't run for it. He said, face it. Full face. We heard what the doctor said, but we heard what God said. The worst is never the worst. If you begin to approach your Bible study as a waiting time, 
if you begin to approach your prayer as a waiting time, it's not boring. Because what you're saying that, Lord, I'm looking, I'm here for renewal. I'm ready for refreshing. So I'm not looking at for time. I'm here for renewal, refreshing. I'm here for all of those things. It's a different story. Everybody knows prayer is powerful. Bible study is powerful. But the major problem we have, this is a major problem that doesn't make it work, is consistency. So we'll do it once in a while. We've done prayers now in January. Oh, next level. Oh, this next level. Oh, I thought we'd rest. No, 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 no. See, let me tell you something. There's no rest until we get the results. Consistency. You are in church this Sunday. What about next Sunday? Oh, you, you prayed last week. What about this week? Someone says, can't we have to leave? Satan doesn't go on leave. The challenges of life does not go on leave. Oh. And that's why it says, give us this day our daily bread. It's consistency. The reason I'm saying so is that when it comes to waste upon the Lord, every Christian does it once in a while. When it comes to prayer, Bible study, giving, we all do once in a while. But the question is this, can we be consistent? I don't know if you know the story about the Chinese bamboo. The Chinese bamboo, they say for the first five years, it never goes beyond this. But after five years, then it becomes taller, almost 25 feet. But they keep watching. It says, let us not be weary. The problem is this, you do the prayer for two months, you forget it. You do the church service for two months. Even you're giving. You say, this year, I'm going to give Isaac offering. I'm going to be tightened. Then probably you do it. Then March, you give up. You don't know what's happening. What is not happening? God is faithful. But listen, you are not consistent. Someone says, I want to be very consistent in prayer, in waiting. Let me tell you the big secret. This will help you the most. This is a trick. This is a trick. If you want to be consistent, you need relationships that will hold you accountable. Some of you feel like, oh, no, no, I mean, I mean, but why do you go to the gym? It's not because of accountability. Why do you have a gym instructor? It's not because of accountability. People that are serious with their life get someone to be accountable to. It's time to stop overestimating your strength and get accountable to someone, even all of you watching online. And this is what happens all the time. I have to always come and water this plant. You know what I've noticed? If you don't water the plant, after some time, it will dry up. The reason for the spiritual dryness is that you've not been watered on recent. This is how some of you feel that God has forgotten me. You feel so dry. You feel as if, what's happening with my, with my appointment? What's happening with this? You, you feel so dry. You feel as if God has forgotten me. He says, God has lost track of me. He doesn't care what happens to me. The moment you begin to sound like this, know that something is wrong spiritually. As a matter of fact, stress is an indicator you've not been waiting on the Lord. Because when you wait on the Lord, you'll be at peace. I know that you've been single, but God will last beyond that phase in your life. I heard what the doctor said, but God will last beyond that phase in your life. No matter what you're going through, God will outlast everything. Some people are so worried. Preparing for is coming. Hey, come now. He doesn't wait to catch his breath. This week has been tough in Nigeria. You queue for this, you queue for that, you queue. Everybody saying something negative. I say, I will not talk that way. This is my strength. They run and get tired. This is me. I will not get tired. I will not get frustrated. Nigeria will not work against me to work for me. Miracle could not detire Jesus. So. I want to ask you a question. Why do you feel depleted? Is it not because you've not spent time to wait upon the Lord? Why do you feel drained? Is it not because you've not spent time to wait upon the Lord? I want to ask you, all of you have cars. Have you noticed when you start serving your car for six months, there are noise that will come out of your car that you've never done before. Your car will start misbehaving. <laughs> why is it jerking like that? No service. The reason why you are jerking is because you've not been serviced recently. Many of you are driving your spiritual life one year, no servicing. The oil is black. It's, not, it's black and thin. The radiator, there's no water inside. Your engine is overheating. You now wonder why you are getting depressed so easily. Because you have not been serviced. And let me say something to you. I think of a wine press because it was mass servicing. But now that wine press is over, what is your method for servicing yourself? Because we cannot wait till next year for you to be serviced again. 